time of fasting. We're going to fast that God will not only heal our land, but God will give us an election where His people will be placed into uh, the right offices. He will take out the corrupt and evil, will put in righteous people, and that God will send an awakening to this nation. Without an awakening, America will never recover. There's power in us to bring healing and miracles and signs and wonders in the name of Jesus. Nothing shall be impossible to us. Nothing shall be withheld from us because we are walking up. Won't you take your Bible and hold it high to the Lord? If you don't have a Bible, just hold your hand up. But I want us to make this declaration together out loud. Say, this is the Word of God. This is God's plan for my life. It's a miracle book. It has great power to bless my life, to heal my body, to help me get to heaven. And I am what it says I am. I have what it says I have. I can do what it says I can do. And I can be what it says I can be. In Jesus' name. I want you to remain standing and turn with me to the book of Second Chronicles 7. And I want to begin reading in verse 14. <clears throat> this is a story of Solomon. And Solomon is dedicating the temple of God. And God speaks to him and says, I'm going to bless you. I'm going to bless the house of Israel. And as long as you honor God, I'll bless you. But if you turn away from God and you begin to go in the wrong direction and serve other gods, and the way to come back to me and he begins to tell him in verse 14, if my people, which are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray. The word humble means to fast. Exactly. So it says, if my people will fast and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and I will forgive their sin and will heal their land. The word land means dirt. That's exactly what it means. And when there is wickedness, the Bible tells us in Hosea, when there is um, uh, murder, when there's lying, when there is adultery, the Bible says there comes a curse on the land. And it says that it will even affect the fishing in the ocean. And the fish will be even driven away. So it affects the fish. It affects the animals. What you're seeing for the first time in uh, this rash of shark attacks. Florida has the worst uh, a part of attacks you can ever see. I have flown in a little plane over the coast of Florida and you could see the sharks, the line of sharks just uh, out from the coast. This is because of wickedness and the evil that's happening in our country. The Bible teaches that in Samaria, the, uh, they, the Assyrians came and captured that part of Israel and they took away part of, their, of the Israeli people and replaced them with Assyrians. And there became man-eating lions. And they began to come in and devour and attack the people. And so the Assyrians said, There's, uh, we need to allow the priests to go back the Jewish priest, and let them begin to teach the Bible. And when they did, these man-eating lions left. So sin and wickedness affect the land. They affect the animal kingdom. They affect everything around you. And so the way to get that healed is when people will begin to fast and pray and humble themselves and repent of their sins. Would you bow your heads as we pray? Father, in the name of Jesus, we pray for our country. We pray for America. We pray for Kentucky. We pray, Lord, for a revival and awakening to come to our land and to our families in the name of Jesus for the glory of God. And everyone said, amen, and you may be seated. God bless you. <clears throat> when God begins to do something or when God sometimes tried to warn people, <clears throat> he sends prophets or he sends these prophetic words and sometimes God will begin to deal with you with dreams and uh, with uh, with visions 
I remember uh, back in the days when Oral Roberts was uh, just a great uh, healing evangelist. Uh, he was coming here to Louisville, and he sent this prayer team. And it was made of a lady. Her name was Winifred Kelly, and her husband was in the oil business. And they were sent here two weeks before the crusade just to pray. And so they stayed at my dad's house, and she prayed about five or six hours a day. And so about uh, six months later, she called my dad, and she said, Brother Rogers, I had a dream about your son, Bob. And she began to tell him about this dream, and she described the exact place where I would go and play basketball after school. I was probably about 11 or 12 years old. And then described that I got into a fight with these guys, and these guys had a knife, and they cut me and killed me. And then she prophesied that one day God's going to raise up Bob as a, in the, to the ministry. And you and your son will work together. And she prophesied how there would be multiple churches. Today we have 22 different locations of evangel. She prophesied all that. So you say, what happened? Well, I quit going over there playing basketball. And that's why I wasn't drafted in the NBA, I guess. I don't know. But the point is this. God warns you and God gives dreams and God gives visions. And God will show you of things to come. And many times God shows you of these things so that uh, you can pray against them and they absolutely will not happen. Uh, this week I had a, uh, a prophetess that called. She was from Australia. And what has happened over the last couple of years, Margaret and I do a morning prayer at 6 o'clock. And uh, we've had people that have joined us in praying on Facebook and YouTube and on X, and they, they join. And now we have close to 20,000 separate people that join us during the month. They join us from South Africa, from the Philippines, from Turkey, from uh, countries all over the world, along with America. And this prophetess is in Australia. And so she had a dream about this church. And she began to talk about the election. And she began to be very specific. And she said, there's more spiritual warfare going on right now in these elections than you can imagine. And God wants to begin to get the body of Christ to begin to pray and begin to fast. And that uh, this church has a network of people who fast and pray. And that we, uh, God said, to begin to organize fasting and praying for this uh, upcoming election. There are 16 more weeks before the election. And God had been dealing with me, but very, this became a real confirmation. And uh, so today I want to share with you what I sense God is speaking. And we're going to begin to take the, the Thursday as a time of fasting. And we're going to fast that God will not only heal our land, but God will give us an election where his people will be placed into uh, the right offices. He will take out the corrupt and evil, will put in righteous people, and that God will send an awakening to this nation. Without an awakening, America will never recover. We need a move of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Hallelujah. Years ago in the history of our nation, um, there was uh, two great politicians. One was John Adams, who later became the president, and also Thomas Jefferson, who was the second president. And uh, these were close friends in the organization of our nation. And after George Washington was president and the country was going they became at odds, John Adams and Thomas Jefferson. The fact is, they became bitter rivals and bitter enemies. Uh, John Adams, he wanted their, to, the colonies to be separate and to have kind of their own say, where Thomas Jefferson was for a strong federal government. And it became so bitter that in the 1800s, they ran against each other for the presidency 
and uh, Thomas Jefferson one and John Adams did not even stay for the inauguration and did not speak to one another for f the next 14 years. And it was during this time that God spoke to one of the founders of our uh, nation, Dr. Benjamin Rush. And I might say, um, Brother Roger Hoagland, uh, who is out of this church as a missionary, is a direct descendant of Benjamin Rush. The fact is, his middle name is Rush. And so, Dr. Benjamin Rush had a dream from God. It came from God. And God said, I want you to help heal this relationship. And he said, first said, Lord, I don't want to do that. And then God gave him a scripture, and it was from the book of Matthew, where it says, blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. And so he contacted John Adams, and he said, I feel like God wants to heal this relationship, and you need to write a letter to Thomas Jefferson congratulating him on his uh, success um, and what he's done for our nation. And then he contacted uh, Thomas Jefferson and said, you need to write a letter stating how you appreciate uh, John Adams. Well, both refused. They said, we're not going to do it. And John Adams said, that's uh, not a prophecy. That's history. But he continued, continued to try to bring these two men together. And finally, on, in 1812, on January the 1st, uh, John Adams was making promises to God, and he felt like he needed to forgive everybody. And he wrote a letter to Thomas Jefferson. Thomas Jefferson replied, and they begin to write one another, and in the Smithsonian Institute are a combination of over 30 letters they wrote back and forth, which are some of the most uh, kind letters and letters the, to be appreciated from two rivals that became very close friends. It came from a dream, and I believe that God uses dreams, and I believe that during the next 120 days, it's 120 days from now until the elections, God is going to do supernatural things in every person that participates in this time of seeking God. Now, let me say this. When I ask people to take an hour today to pray, you have to set a time to do that or you won't pray. If you don't have a time to go to work, you won't show up for work. If you don't have a time to eat, you probably will be scattered. Everybody eats at 12 o'clock, not because they're hungry. People just don't get supernaturally hungry at 12 o'clock. God didn't make you that way. It's just a time to eat. And so you eat at 12 o'clock because it's time to eat. Well, you set a time to pray, and you keep that appointment with God. And when you do, God pays you to pray. Did you hear me? Oh, I can't pray. I've got to get to work. I've, you know, if, 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 I, if I do that, I'll lose money. No, no, no. You don't lose money. God pays you to pray. And uh, God spoke that to one of the men in my church. And he, was, he, he called me and talked to me. And he said, and then God gave him a promise. And God gave him a scripture with 2 Chronicles 26, 5. And it says, as long as he sought the Lord, God made him to prosper. As long as he prayed and kept that covenant with God in prayer, God commanded wealth and blessing to come upon him and prosper his life. And so if you set aside a time to pray, it may be six in the morning, it may be uh, three in, in the afternoon, it may be at evening. If you keep your appointment, God says, oh, he just punched in and put him on Send the check out. Checks in the mail. Hallelujah. God will prosper you and bless you, and there will be a spirit of increase of everyone that takes a time to pray. So you set a time, and whatever that time is, you keep your appointment, and God will keep his appointment, and God will honor you. Now, I want to share, um, uh, by the revelation of the Holy Spirit, what's going to happen to you in the next 120 days. I want to share this with you. The first thing that I want to share, is God is going to restore back to you those things which have been stolen. Sometimes those things have been stolen from your own family. Sometimes they've been, you've been held back. 
because of racism and because of advancements in work, or sometimes the devil has just come in and stolen from you. But Proverbs 6, 30 and 31 is a promise for you. Hold up your right hand. Say, I love this scripture. Say, it's my favorite scripture in the Bible. It says this. It says, when the thief is found, and it's talking about this thief who, when he's hungry, he steals for food. But it says, when he is found, he must restore sevenfold. Now, if I was hungry, and my family was hungry, and I had no other way of getting food, I might steal for food. And so, it's kind of an honorable thing to get caught when you got stealing for food because that's something that you have to provide for your family. But even in that case, you have to pay it back and you have to pay it back sevenfold. Well, <clears throat> what if somebody steals for you for drugs? That's not honorable. And so it's not paying back seven times. It could be paying it back 10 times or 20 times. In the book of Leviticus, it talks about if somebody steals your sheep or steals your ox, they don't pay it back seven times. They pay it back 10 times. They pay it back 15 times. So it says when the thief is found, and that word to me found is when suddenly it comes, it comes as a revelation to you. Listen, the devil stole this from me. God, God said he would repay this back what you have to do is forgive that individual. Now, they're not going to pay it back. Why are you mad at them? Well, they took my money. Well, they're not going to pay it back anyway. You think they're going to pay it back? They're not. So release them, and when you do, God will have another means to pay it back. God, God may cause something in your business to prosper. God may give you a raise, but God will send that back to you Seven times, 10 times, 20 times, 50 times more in the name of the Lord. And this is going to be a season God's going to do it. Somebody stole my dog, Simba. And I was really upset and I, was, I thought, well, I'll never see that dog again. And suddenly it became a revelation to me that God can help me to find that lost dog. And God spoke to me as I read the book of Samuel how, how uh, Saul lost his donkeys. And he went to the man of God, and Samuel told him where the donkeys were. And so I felt impressed to put up some signs. And I put up lost dog, Simba. And at 7 in the morning, I had a phone call. Actually, it was about a quarter till 7. And I know why they called me that time, because <clears throat> Simba woke him up barking. And this lady asked me, she said, do you have a dog that got taken? I said, yes. Is it a big uh, yellow um, golden retriever? I said, yeah. I says, well, my neighbor took your dog. He's got it chained out there in the, uh, in the back of his house, and he keeps up, he kept us awake all night long. Would you please come and get your dog? God help me to find that dog. God will restore that in the name of Jesus. I had a bunch of rental property, and I remember I had this, this house, and I was just hanging by a thread. I just, uh, I had to have that rent, and that lady skipped out on me. She moved out. I went over to get that rent. She owed me back rent, and she, she took. I sat there in that house, and I, I felt like crying. If I could have, if crime would have helped, I would have cried. But I sat there, and I said, God, I've been a tither. I've, I have to have this money. What am I going to do to make the payment on that mortgage? And I'm in there praying, and suddenly the, the mailman came, and he dropped that mail right through the chute, right in, through the front door. And I went over there, and there was a check. Their welfare check had come. And I had, was holding that check, and I, had, I thought all kind of things. But uh, um, about that time, there was a knock on the door. And uh, I opened the door, and it was this lady's son. I said, uh, hey, man, where'd you guys go? Oh, we've... We had to move and all this. And mama sent me by to pick up the mail. I said, well, you tell your mama I got her mail. But she needs to come and see me. And so she came over and I said, if you want this check, you're going down to the bank with me and you're going to pay me my rent first. And, or I'm not giving it to you. I would have probably given it to her. But I, I told her I wasn't going to give it to her. 
And that's how I got my rent. God helped me to get my rent. Oh, hallelujah. She wasn't happy, but, but God was happy and I was happy. Hallelujah. <laughs> now, what am I talking about? If you've had things stolen from you, it's your right in the name of Jesus to have it paid back with interest. And in the next 120 days, I want you to believe God for breakthroughs and you're going to see miracles happen for you. The second thing is that God will restore to you every dream and every vision. Some of you, God spoke to you. God gave you a real dream in your life. You know, a, a dream or a vision from God, a goal from God doesn't leave you. It, it's branded in your spirit. Once, go. But desires from God, they're branded inside of you. And it's like being hungry. It just doesn't lift. And some of you have had dreams of start your own business, dreams of taking trips, dreams of doing things. Don't give up on your dreams. Start speaking your dreams. Start speaking your goals. And you'll see it come to pass. Jeremiah 29 says, for, for I know the Lord's plans for you. Uh, he declares the Lord plans for good, not of evil, to give you a future and of hope. To give you a future. God's got a future for you. God's not through with you. There's hope. God knows how to do it, and God knows how to pay for it in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Bill, Bill Taylor he was a black man, lived down in Alabama. They were very poor. He only was able to get through the eighth grade uh, because it was so difficult to go to school. Their house was up on, on uh, brick poles. Uh, they could almost walk underneath the house. And he would lay there in his bed at night and he would hear those trucks pass down the highway. And he thought, God, maybe one day you'd bless me and I'd get to own one of those trucks and I could have a, a trucking business. And so he began to work on engines and he got where he was a real good mechanic and finally <clears throat> he got to the place he brought, bought a broken down bus and he worked on it, got it running, then he got another bus, then he got another bus and worked on them and um, Here's been my experience. If you've got a lot of money, buy used equipment because it's going to take a lot of money to keep those things running. If you don't have a lot of money, buy something new so it won't break down. So uh, he, uh, he uh, had all this broken down equipment and it would break down every week. And he had to have some money. He had to have money to, to get some other equipment. And so he found an investment banker in New York City. And he flew to New York and he was praying, God, you've got to help me. You've got to uh, help me get this money. And he went in with a plan to borrow between fifty dollars and $100,000 so he could uh, fix up this equipment, put new engines in them and so forth. When he talked to this investment banker and he showed him his dreams and his goals, this investment banker said, I'm not going to loan you 50000 I'm not going to loan you 100 But for you to make this thing go and fulfill your dreams, you need a million dollars. And they financed Bill Taylor a million dollars. He bought new equipment. He bought trucks. And today, one of the leading truck companies in uh, transit businesses in the South was owned by this man. God knows how to fulfill your dreams and your goals. Don't give up. That's the key. Pray, stand in the gap, and you'll see God meet every need. Come on, give the Lord a great big praise clap. Hallelujah. <clears throat> in the next 120 days, some of you are going to take trips. Some of you are going to start businesses. Some of you are going to do things that you've always dreamed and hoped about doing. Listen, God's got the money to make it all work. Can I hear an amen? amen? Let me tell you the third thing that God showed me, that God is going to bring a healing to families. You know, every prayer you pray, God doesn't throw away your prayers. You, you pray a prayer, God just doesn't say, well, you know, he, he threw that in a garbage can. God stores up your prayers. 
And when you get to heaven, you're going to see these huge warehouses. What are those warehouses for? Oh, those are stored prayers. Those are prayers. And the Bible says he stores up your tears, according to Revelation chapter 5. So your prayers and your tears are stored. And then if you're praying for a family member, the time comes when that family member's ready to receive the prayer. Sometimes they're not ready to receive it. And you pray and their heart, their heart is hardened. But there comes a time God breaks that down. And they're ready to receive that prayer. And suddenly, God releases it. And they, you see that answer. Well, I hope you enjoyed today's program. And the fact is, I want to uh, serve communion. Uh, many of you uh, are, are homebound, but you're not shut out from God. God is with you. God is there. And sometimes when it comes to communion, uh, people go for a long time and don't take communion. But the Apostle Paul said, I received this from the revelation of God. No man taught him about this communion. He came through the power of the Holy Spirit. And he says to do it often. He says as often as you do it, do it in remembrance of me. And if you'll discern the Lord's Supper, this communion, he said, God will heal you. He said, people who don't discern it, they die. They can die instead of receive their healing. But everything that Jesus conquered at the cross is in this communion. There's healing. There's prosperity. There's victory over demons and devils. There's healing from depression. And there's forgiveness of sin. And so today, let's partake together, just you and me. Father, we bless these crackers, this bread. We bless this juice. And Father, as we eat it, it's you coming inside of us. God in us, the hope of glory. I rebuke cancer and diabetes and attacks on your home and your children and your family. And I speak victory in Jesus' name. Let's eat together. Let's drink together. Now just take just a moment, lift your hands up. God spoke to me that when I lift up my hands, there will be a presence of healing, a presence of victory. So Father, we praise you. We thank you for the victory we have in Christ. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Now, I, I'd like to hear from you. Your gift, your gift will help uh, save lives in northern Israel. They're believing there's going to be a full-scale war. We pray that won't happen. But uh, we're, we're going to have these portable a bomb shelter, uh, they're $15,000. Your gift will help make all that happen. God bless you, and we look forward to seeing you next week at this same time. Miracles and signs and wonders in the name of Jesus. Nothing shall be impossible to us. Nothing shall be withheld from us because we are walking uprightly before the Lord. I break generational curses. I break it in the name of Jesus Christ. May there be a change that takes place for the glory of the Lord. In Jesus' name.